Good evening all, ladies and gents, thanks for coming along to the lecture night tonight. I'm very happy to uh, introduce Bernd Langer, VK2IA, to you all. Half of your name is um, the most serious contest that any of us are ever likely to meet. If you ever seen him in action, you just walk away shaking your head. Um, it's, uh, it's a scary thing. But uh, Bernd has been a long time member of our club, uh, not always up here, we're so glad to get him back. But um, particularly tonight to talk about um, a recent day expedition with a whole gang up in Timor and uh, it's also very opportune to either meet Bernd or see him again because he and his missus are about to move to Broome so we won't be seeing much of him but hopefully we'll hear him on HF so yeah. Bernd, thank you. Thanks. Well, thanks Tom and thanks for every, everybody to come up here it's a really pleasure I'm very glad to be up here again Last time I was here was uh, for a barbecue, which uh, obviously was probably a year ago. Yeah, last year, I think. Last year, yeah. And so uh, there always has to be a reason, obviously, for me to come, which is a bit sad. But uh, yeah, look, tonight I'm going to talk about uh, Timor Leste, uh, the expedition in which I participated in. Uh, is it okay when I speak without the uh, well, the I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, no, I, I, okay. I prefer to. To yeah, stick to my natural voice. Yeah. If I'm fading oh, out at the end, just, just let me yeah, know. I switch yeah, this thing off. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was last year in September, and uh, <clears throat> there's a bit of a story to it. There's a bit of a story about it, and I'm going to tell you about it uh, just in a minute. A little bit of background. Yeah, as uh, Storm said, we're going to move uh, to Broome. That's all based, and this trip, in fact, I have to admit as well, based on some changes in my life, business-wise. Uh, my business partner and myself, we split and we split the company. Uh, that was last year, early last year. It was a longish process, and we decided actually to uh, finalize everything by the end of August. And, and these guys were planning it from the previous year, September, to go there. And I had this in mind. I remembered it at some stage. It was particularly sparked by a video which we, we saw, and you, you might have seen it. Uh, it was actually on ABC Ballyball, which is about the Ballyball Five. Very good uh, movie about uh, five Australian journalists who got killed in East Timor in 1975. And for me, I always had an interest in the country somehow, never managed to go there. And uh, I watched the video, I thought about my situation, that was in July, and the next day I, I thought, well, why don't you send these guys an email and ask them whether they still need an operator? Silly question, <coughs> I knew they had been planning for so long. I sent an email to Stewie, and I come to his guy here, he was the team leader, and I said, silly question, do you still need an operator? WCW, etc. Uh, here's my references and uh, he came back the next day and said uh, well funny that you ask uh, a couple of weeks ago one of our CW operators whinged about uh, us being too little and not not enough CW operator so uh, yeah he asked the team they said yes and I was on so that was really lucky I must say uh, it was very exciting I mean I only had two two months until we took off and uh, yeah, we had a few things, the guys already had taken care of many things to look after. What I want to do tonight is, I first want to talk a little bit about uh, East Timor, a few things, then it's all on PowerPoint, then a few slides about uh, actually radio facts, and then I got a slideshow which is actually a, a movie type thing and that just goes on and I will comment on the slides, so I'll do it this way. So, uh, where's Timor Leste? Um, I mean, uh, most of you probably know that it's part, it used to be part of, uh, well, it's part of the, the Indonesian archipelago. It's not far away from Australia, it's a, an hour's flight from Darwin, which is about here. It's one of the newest additions to the DXCC country list or UN countries list since 2003. Um, <coughs> we went to East Timor, to Timor Leste. We didn't stay on the mainland, we went to a Toro Island, which is offshore Dili, that's about 30 k's away, it's still surrounded by Indonesia. <laughs> and on the island we stayed, unfortunately, well that was my first thought when I heard about it, on, on the east coast. And if you look at the main directions radio-wise, Europe is across 
this way, you're at four tyres. Uh, the reason why we stayed here was there is a, an eco resort which is run by an Australian who's married to a Timorese wife. And uh, yeah, quite nice people, quite really great place to stay. One of the things I forgot to mention when the guys actually said yes to me joining them, my first question was how much is it? Because that, that would have been really my the factor that throws it up, or throws it over. And then he said, well, it's, it's around $1,500 all up. I said for the expedition, I mean, you're normally talking in terms of five grand, ten grand. This this would have been out of my budget, but fifteen hundred dollars, thirty-five dollars per night on the island, per per head, full breakfast, uh, lunch, and dinner. I mean, you can't sign anything. It was it was really it was uh, the flight to East Timor is uh, four hundred bucks from Darwin. I mean, you've got to get to Darwin, and it's it's really it's a low cost thing, and the country is really great. But I mean, maybe not everybody. Uh, is used to what you see there. I mean, it's it's the poorest country in in Asia still. So we stayed on on the east coast of the island, right at the front, at the waterfront there, which is perfect in all these directions. And, and I had my concerns in that direction. Well, a few facts about East Timor. In the mid 1600s, Portugal actually declared it as a colony. They have quite a number of colonies uh, around the world. In 1859, the, the Dutch who were active in the area already before, they and the Portuguese had a bit of a dispute about Timor, and the, the island was divided up into East and West Timor. And East Timor is uh, the eastern part with an enclave which we currently talk about. Uh, there was in World War II a Japanese invasion, and the Allied forces uh, went there and helped uh, the Timorese, but a lot was uh, basically coming from their own resistance. In 1974, and this is a date I put in because it had quite a significance in, in their history, there was a revolution and a coup, coup d'etat in Portugal, and from that time onwards, actually, the Portuguese interest kind of uh, diminished in East Timor. They were still focused on the African colonies, but it diminished until a time where, the, basically, it's, it's a bit more complicated than that, but uh, in, in, in 1975, on the 28th of November, uh, it was actually Fretilin, which is one of these well, freedom fighter organizations in the past. They always wanted. It was a political party at that time. They declared independence, and seven days later, the country was invaded by Indonesia, and this was what this movie Volleyball was about. Um, that that invasion was followed by an occupation of 20 odd years until. 1999, when there was a referendum under UN supervision where the majority of the East Timorese voted for independence. Before that, uh, I wanted to mention that the Nobel Peace Prize was awarded to Jose Hamasota, who is now the Prime Minister. Uh, he looked a bit different. That same in, in Darwin at that time. Um, so the referendum was in favor of independence, but uh, the militia and, uh, supported by Indonesia they didn't accept it, they went in and it was a fair kind of a civil war happening in East Timor at that time until the early 2000s. Uh, UN peacekeeping forces were deployed, Australia was one of the first, you, you may remember, I mean this is all history, <coughs> you pretty much remember I think. And 2002 it was recognized by the UN. This is just three photos, I mean these for me are the two faces of East Timor. This is Jose Ramos Horta, and this is Fernando Guzmao, he's Prime Minister now. He's, uh, sorry, he's President and he's Prime Minister. And that's a photo, I think it's an original, from the Balibor 5 when they painted the Australian flag on that house in Balibor, which where they were afterwards killed. So a little bit of background, of course, this is all my view of history. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty objective. Now, a few facts about the country. The capital is Dili, which is fairly small, almost 200,000 uh, inhabitants. Population, well, they say it's 1.2, well, 800,000 to 1.2 million. We settled on 1 million. Area is 15,000 square meters. You compare it with the, the Australian capital uh, territory, it's a fairly bigger, the ACT is. Highest point, it goes up to 3,000 meters. So it's, although it's fairly small, it's, it's got its mountains. And languages are in, in, in order of, uh, Significance is Tatum, that's their own language. 
Indonesian behind Indonesia. So Indonesian is, is very common because of the occupation and the history. Portuguese, Portuguese is besides technically the of official language, but it's not really a, a language which uh, Joe Blow um, on the street speaks and well some <coughs> other languages, not dialects. So it's, it's uh, the Tara Island has got its own language, which is fairly distant to Tetum. But that's, that's basically, that's what everybody understands and speaks and mostly, and this is older people, mainly. Religion, because of the history and the link to Portugal, I mean, it it's, doesn't come as a surprise that 98, almost 100% of people are Roman Catholics. Whether they're practicing is a different story, but you see a fair influence of the church by many churches they are built in terms of buildings and also well i mean yeah, the people the crosses etc but resources are coffee and a few others natural gas is to be developed and there has been a dispute particularly about the sunrise yeah. gas field up here it's obviously settled that's between australia and east timor the Timorese, and this would be a big revenue for the country, but it's obviously not going to happen. They want a, a processing plant onshore, but uh, while well, the parties involved, which are the big uh, oil and gas companies, they either want it processed on this side, and Australia has that interest too, or on a vessel, a flow. Literacy is fairly low, 50, almost 50% 50 only. So it's, uh, it's considered uh, the poorest country in Asia. Now, uh, just a few words about TAM Radio. The team, it was seven of us, and it was uh, Stu, he's from Darwin, because and three, he was actually the guy who initiated it. Uh, Oliver, they planned it together, because DX um, is the owner of 4W6I, or the license is issued to him. Myself, uh, and he's from, where is he? Here, from Wales. Tim M0UIX from England, uh, 9M60XX Steve from, he's also a POM, and uh, John is a Scotsman, 9M6XRO. Uh, I mean, for the ones of you who are on the bands, these two call signs are fairly active. Uh, Steve's more on SSB, John's on CW, and it was a bit like that. Uh, Myself and John were 100% CW, and Stewie was CW and uh, a little bit SSB and uh, RTTY bilingual. Really. <laughs> so just a quick one. I like to do these things. It's it's fairly in depth stuff. But when I go to uh, or think about going to a country to play with radio and contests or expeditions, one of the first things I have a look at is the Great Circle map and I have a look at where it holds the, the aurora over time. Because that, if you for example go to, out to the Pacific, you've got the whole of Europe behind the aurora over, which means uh, well, 15, 10 meters, if, if it's possible from other places, it's not from there, depending on conditions. So Timo is here. This shows you, you, you get a pretty good shot into Europe, which is, I think, 10,000 k's away. The US is also pretty good, except for the East Coast up here, and uh, Eastern Canada particularly, which is behind the poles. But the rest of the world, except for South America, South America is like similar to here. Its parts are really difficult to get to. Um, equipment, we, it was actually, and uh, I'm not paid by them, but uh, I got to two of them myself, a K3 and a K2. It was 100% Elecraft transceivers and two Elecraft linears, the new ones. Uh, one ICOM linear, which is a, a valve amp, and uh, an FL2100, which was mine, which didn't work. <laughs> Why didn't you borrow more? <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought it was working. It's one of these things, but uh, yeah. it, we left it in the corner for all the time. So, a few antennas, about the antennas, and I myself, I have to have a look at that because I can't remember them all, but I may not go in, into details. You see, mainly vertical antennas for, for each band, except what well, we've got a beam, which is this one. A hex beam for the high bands, 20 meters up, and uh, a butternut, which is a multi-band vertical somewhere. I think that's the one. 
Mm. So they, are, they were all actually set up along the coastline. Mm. And uh, well, this shows you actually, this is almost, I think it's east or, no, sorry, west, 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 yeah. west or southwest. And when we landed there, that was a bit of a, a shock. When I saw this, these mountains behind there, I thought, holy shit, this is <laughs> not going to happen to Europe. But it was fantastic. It was really great. I can't, long path was obviously a lot better. Short path was still, despite the mountains, and just think about the, the takeoff angle. Did you work out roughly what the angle was? Uh, well, it's oh, there you go, about 15, <laughs> 20, 15, 15, 20, 20, that's all right. Yeah. That's nice. So yeah, that's yeah. that's a clearer <laughs> shot. Like, so how how far did the tide tide come to the? <laughs> well, yeah, like I bet you yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. three meters. That's the first the first oh, vertical oh. that was in the question. How did you get ten kilowatts of power in an eco village? <laughs> well, we wrong <laughs> question. <laughs> it wasn't very eco that week. <laughs> <laughs> so we, had to, we had two generators. Ah. So uh, yeah, that was. The first vertical we set up was actually set up at uh, low tide, and guess what happened? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming with that one now. <laughs> yeah, and I'm doing this now because I just wanted to stick to the slideshow at the end. I mean, this is a bit, a few numbers. Some of you might take something out of it, others don't. So we made out in total in ten days, or a bit less than ten days, forty yeah. one thousand cubes. <laughs> It was a fairly good mix between CW and SSB, 19 versus 21, and I must say, we actually have lost uh, about 1,000 CW QSOs. Uh, because the lot, of that, the lot. Because of that computer? Because we had, and, and this was, I normally ne never had a problem with WinTest, which is the logging software, but because we had the power outages, the generators went down, the network kind of collapsed and, and there was the files were unsaved as they should have been. Uh -oh. So it was a software glitch. And we lost one thousand queues, which is a bit of a pity. We thought about what to do but there's nothing we can do. Some people might be angry and uh, uh, don't like it, but we said okay, what's in the lock is in the lock, what's not in the lock is not in the lock, unfortunately. So it's a, also good spread no phone on on 160 obviously, but as you can see, I mean the, the high bands, and that was good for us uh, that the high bands started to 15 open meters up. was the cash cow, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, 15 and yeah, the right well, the right right was, yeah, 15. Yeah. If you look at this number, yeah, definitely. Wow. That's magic. Yeah. What did you use that for a hex beam, was it? Oh, uh, no, well, hex oh. beam, well, we, we, we once. We used also on 15 the hex beam and the vertical at the same time, one SSB, one CW. I mean, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. worked out. Not, not not how far apart? What separation? Oh, probably 30 meters, 20 meters. How did you do it? Did, did you get trucks there or anything? No. Well, no, but no, we didn't. But we had, we had actually one had, one guy did bring the filters, little filters. But I mean, one was... Polarization. Polarization was yeah, different. Still. Uh, yeah, but it, it it's worked. It's mean, Yeah. Um, walking ahead. This is something that shows up in the slides again, but that's, that's, that was me actually on 80, and, and I put it up because uh, it's just the right. That was <laughs> North, North America. It was, that, that was, no, that was a time, and, and I didn't have that before. That was, 80 was like 20 meters, but only for half an hour to the east coast. Of it's the been US. like that this week into Europe in the short part of the morning. Well, nine plus. Yeah, fantastic. Obviously I'm nine plus. Look at the signal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, this, this last week has been fantastic. I mean, we, we tried to actually accommodate as many people as possible. There was obviously bigger demand in, in the US than in Je uh, Japan or Oceania. And so uh, a few people obviously didn't like the way when we were focusing on some areas, regional areas. When I had this run, or it was actually before that, and that's a story I will tell, is uh, I actually was calling North America only for 10 minutes and no one replied. I mean, people kept quiet. I was calling North America because they already only had the, the gray line, as you could see, yeah. and very difficult. And I worked VA1, and, but, but maybe one a minute only. And one bloody, I must have been a Nazi or Kiwi, called me Wanker. <laughs> 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 I wonder how did you call him? You call him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, 
<laughs> I laughed about it. <laughs> well, you could hear his strawn coming through in the coat. <laughs> All right, now this is a slideshow, and uh, it's about 10 minutes, and uh, it's about the whole trip to Timor. So that was the team in Darwin, that's team from England uh, and from Four Wales, guys. <laughs> two guys from Darwin and myself and the two guys from uh, Malaysia joined us in Dili. Oh, that's, I, I don't know how this comes in. But, uh, and then the surprise at the airport. Where is it? It's a bloody surprise at the airport is gone. Right. Yeah, I mean I had the photo in. And I was I'm very proud of that because at Darwin Airport we bumped into Shanana Wismal, oh, mm. the president. And he started a photo with us. Yeah, well, I have a photo with him and I thought, well, what a star. <laughs> so this is Dili, actually, downtown Dili, all sorts of vehicles. Uh, you see there, it's uh, UN very present still. Uh, it's, it's along the coast, that's where the capital is. A few team members, I mean, he's from Wales, England, he's uh, having his fish and chips or whatever. <laughs> I had other stuff while over there. Um, yeah, so we spent the first uh, day, part of the group, the first day in Delhi, or was it two days, and another part stayed one day on, and I was with the guys who stayed on. We, the first part of the group went over with, this was not the boat, but that went to a kind of a bigger ferry, with all the equipment on and we had it, they had it set up over on the island. So uh, that's uh, because ITX Oliver. Um, yeah, I mean a few shots, uh, I may not say anything at any time, I mean it just watch, it's, it's a few impressions from, from Dilly beachside. Um, the garbage on that beach? The, the two that's I stayed on with uh, with Tim from England, and he and and I, I don't know what they watched on TV about East Timor. Uh, he was quite scared to get outside of the hotel, and uh, when we were on, by ourselves, him him and myself, uh, we went out and I said I challenge you now, and we went down the dark alley, and well he was a bit kind of paralysed in the beginning, but he did it. I mean, it's like this. It's, yeah, it's. There's still a, here's a UN is still a very present, um, friendly people. Unfortunately, language is a bit of a barrier if you don't speak Tetum in the news. Sydney buses, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks like my old school bus. <laughs> yeah, and uh, quite a number of dogs around. I mean, the country, when you, it, it's, it's really one of these feelings I haven't had actually before. When I flew uh, with my background in Europe, when, I, when you fly to Africa, you, you hop on the plane, you, you, you're on the plane for four hours, you get off the plane, and the world is completely different. It's chaotic, it's here, you're in Darwin, you hop on the plane an hour later, you get off the plane, and it's pure chaos. I mean, it's, it's completely different. It's a friendly chaos, but it's uh, something which I, I hadn't thought of before I went there, before I arrived. Uh, entry into East Timor was very easy, no problems at customs at all. Oh, I mentioned this now while the slides on. There was the Tour de Timor, which is not the Tour de France, but the Tour de Timor. Um, and that's, that was on a Sunday when the roads were closed, when the bike riders were cycling around town. They a bit of dirt, so there's also common pictures uh, I think in South, Southeast Asia. Asia. <laughs> Here's the two of the, the team. You still see the scars of the war, mm -hmm. the buildings that were not repaired. Um, kids are always interesting to take photos of and they're always interested in being taken photos of. This is uh, Steve. They arrived at the airport on a day later and Tim and I picked him and uh, John's not on picked them up and we went across to the island uh, by ourselves, or the, the four of us, plus of, of course the skipper, and we were welcomed by the guys here that was on our arrival. They already had erected a few antennas, but we put the bigger ones up together. One, one of the big ones was 160 meter vertical, which is 26 meters high. 
which was a bit of a struggle. I don't think I have it on the picture. Here's the cherry cans for the generators. We have two, two jennies. This one. Excuse me. This is what we call the manly, the, the common bathhouse, and you just use this pot and took water and, and cleaned yourself uh, with the water which was available there. That's one of the we had four operating positions, which was uh, <laughs> fairly, lying down the <laughs> <laughs> fairly generous for seven people. So we had uh, quite a few of a few times where, where stations were idle, but at the same time there were also bands. Not not all the time the bands were available for the four station. That's John. He spent, he made all the cues on 160, I didn't have any ambition because it's a struggle on 160. That's noisy. Yeah, yeah, and a few shots of the guys and uh, that's Stu, that's where we stayed, where we slept in one of the huts. Uh, we stayed there with four, so two beds, oh here's, uh, that's Oliver, Slovakia, that's Malaysia, Wales, England, Australia and East Timor. Uh, that's the huts we stayed in, but he's, he had a few more. There's two of the guys stayed right near the beach in one of those shacks in tents. Um, yeah, and we all had uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner at one at Barry's house and it was like a buffet style. It was local food, it was really perfect and the value for money and it's really... Uh, this is me, that's a mild one, but one of the guys, John, he had really, I have never seen that size of blisters at his legs when they put up the 160 vertical and I, I pulled out, I didn't want a heat strap. One day we went around the island to the uh, western side and this is where it is. Uh, we actually shut down all the stations, we went there for half a day and just did a bit of uh, sightseeing, a bit of snorkeling and also visited the village there which is right at the shore there um, and uh, life's very basic there, very basic. I mean, uh, fishermen, that's one of the things they do over there and uh, yeah, I mean when you see the photos it's, it's more base, much more basic than Dilly. Um, so, but they obviously, and, and I mean I'm not in a position to say that particularly these people live a happy life, but uh, while well, the feedback we got and I got uh, regarding independence is that uh, that's something everybody wanted, most people wanted. There's certainly now a bit of a struggle financially, and while well, the gas industry could help, but uh, that's a different story. So that's on the other side of the island. Um, yeah, a few impressions. Oh, there, we saw them oh, quite regularly, the black pigs. On the way back, we, we had our fishing rods with us, but we prefer to ask these guys and to purchase a few fish from them for dinner. So a few impressions again, uh, and that's what I spoke about before, there was just a screenshot of the 18 meter row. Then on the island there was a market and I went to a, a doll factory, uh, this is in the doll factory, and uh, yeah, you had tuk-tuks taking you around. Uh, I think that's uh, Australian Navy. My memory, they visited Dilly when we went back. This is Barry, who, is, who owns that place at Eco Resort. Uh, it runs on uh, solar power normally, but he's got a backup gen. This was one of the first things uh, the guys wanted to do rugby. It was uh, <laughs> whales flying whoever, I don't know. And, uh, yeah, well, I, I didn't grow up with this game. So. <laughs> then uh, me and uh, Oliver hired a car for one day and we went inland. Uh, and the other guys didn't have any interest. The two already were heading off to Malaysia the day earlier. The two Englishmen, or English and Welshmen, uh, they kind of were still a bit iffy about going somewhere where they didn't know. So we went inland to Mobisi, which is a town in the mountains <coughs> about 1,000 meters high. Uh, it's about, I think, seven. 70 kilometers from Dili, but it took us three and a bit hours. The road is shocking, and it's but it's it's really worth the drive. It's uh, I had a coffee with this man, so it's it's actually a coffee growing area, the mountains and fresh air and uh, yeah, it's 
different to Dilly. I would also recommend it. If is it cool would... up there? No, not cold. No, it's a bit cooler here. Yeah. It's, it's not that sticky. They, they, they plant rice. This is the Toro from Dili. This is the Presidential Palace. We didn't meet this man, but I took a photo at the airport. <laughs> is the coffee good? The coffee is good, yeah. I mean, uh, how much did I pay? 500 grams, two dollars. <laughs> Just imagine you know, what fair trade costs you. Know? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, that was it. You don't have the videos, but which were on YouTube. No, I don't. What a pity, because that was good stuff. Yeah, I thought, uh, yeah, no. Uh, so it was maybe a bit of a rush, but <laughs> I didn't want anybody to fall asleep. No. That's no, the worst no, nightmare of the presenter. So. <laughs> when, when are we going, guys? <laughs> <laughs> you like the K3s? Are they worth the right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got my, one myself. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Would, would, you case call, order, right? would you consider other areas on the main East Timor Island? I mean, you obviously went to yeah, specific Yeah, I mean, it's Timor <laughs> itself, uh, the north coast. There's, uh, there's, yeah, certainly to the left and right of Dili. Maybe Dili is a bit noisy. Mm -hmm. But, uh, well, the problem you have, uh, the further you get away from Dili is, well, you, you can get there, but it takes you a while. Yeah. Uh, you can hire cars and uh, electricity. electricity. Is, is, so if you organize your generators, and we had them hired in Delhi, I mean, you can do all that. And license-wise, it's, it's, it's easy, really. Um, well, we had this license, and a few guys had their licenses, uh, <coughs> F4W licenses, but their regulation actually says that anybody with a, a valid CEPT license can come over and stay there for three months and use 4W slash or some air call sign slash 4W. So it's, it's easy. I'm not sure about customs. I've now applied for a license, a real call sign again, which takes a long time there. I mean, we, we went to what, what are they called, Ofram or something, the, the licensing uh, authority. And yeah, well, it's, it's like in any other country. It's like it takes a while to turn. Yeah. Um, Talk about power take? restrictions there. Power restrictions. How much power you allowed to run? Well, we we did run. I think there are, but uh, <laughs> not allowed to cut the grid down. I, th I think, in, <laughs> I think <laughs> luckily there, while while the licensing system or legislation was more <laughs> along the lines of the Australian ones, I, yeah, I I'm exactly. thinking that their power side was more Kiwi. Right. Yeah. Could we find that in the book anyway? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So that's. Any complaints from the neighbours uh, with the uh, No, no, that was, that, was, that, was, that was another thing. Actually, we, we had one side of the resort and everybody else, and particularly on weekends, the resort was full and it was mainly visitors from the mainland, expats or who stayed on, and NGOs and, and all of that. And, but, but still, after the first week or so, it was almost every night, and I happened to have the night shift on one radio, when, when I, all of a sudden this crowd gathered around me and, and my, my partner there on the other radio and uh, yeah, and, and, and Stewie came in, yeah, look at this and, and uh, while I was waiting for someone to pull my headphones and it's just in the middle of a pile of, I mean it was all fair enough the first time it was fun for me but when I heard them laughing in the background I thought oh, well now I'm up to a second night and yeah so that was the QRM. <laughs> so they were actually basically these guys were all interested in it and we had uh, during uh, breakfast lunch or dinner we all were together at that one place and, and got asked questions so what's this about uh, what, tell me and, and it was interesting there were a few people from the tour de Timor I mean in, in a, they are in a similar similar way and that is like like us. <laughs> so we, we really didn't complain about that side of, of our holdings, but I mean it was really interesting to to see and talk to these guys. What percentage of the population uh, really understood what you were doing? And why you were there for? What you were there for? Um, uh, what <laughs> percentage? <laughs> well, I mean, you see, it, the uh, thing is, uh, in amateur radio circles, <coughs> Even if you're a ham, I think uh, there's quite a percentage of hams who don't understand. So I would would think it's uh, 
Zero. It's almost zero. I don't want to see it. Point one, zero. Point one. <laughs> yeah. all, all magic, was it? Yeah, well, I mean, we had on, along the beach there where every morning, I don't know what they did, there were people like they were going to work or something from one end to the other, walking between the, the antennas and the water. And I mean, uh, some of them, and well, communication was a bit of a problem, and we were not always outside to explain with hands and don't nothing. touch the metal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, uh, Are there any locally licensed amateurs? No. no. Well, there is one guy. He's Australian. He's currently there, and he's on on satellite, I think. But locally, I think when was it 2007? There was a group of uh, yeah. Spaniards going there, and they tried to get someone at uni, at university, mm. interested in, but since then, never heard of them. Well, did, did one guy about two years ago, I think his name was Trevor, and he was on CW too, which was... Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, occasional it is, and the last one was our club did, member, Dave. The guy Buda went up there. Yeah, he was yeah. there in, in March, but, uh, well, he was low profile. I mean, uh, SSB, no power, and... Uh, Fairly small antennas. It's it's pretty hard, and that was before actually the sunspots jumped up. That was really, and before that, uh, well, there was the occasional activity. <coughs> then there were we had the Spaniards there, but that was in July, which is never a good good month for Europe and the US for the low bands. So and the high bands. The aircraft radios were they loaned here from aircraft? No, our own stuff. So one aircraft and uh, one K three and one K two was from me and mm. and the other guys there. Actually, two of the guys they purchased their KPA five hundreds mm. and took them straight with them okay. just for that purpose. Aircraft didn't want to sponsor. Mm. I don't know how some people do. And they never do to anybody. Oh, I, I thought I, I thought they did to yeah, some people. You didn't uh, T thirty two. Oh, they, I, yeah, 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 you, you, you're yeah. probably right, yeah. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, I prefer an activity like this. And, and, and for me, the bottom line really is when, and, and I haven't, this was the first time for me I have joined a group like this. So when I went somewhere before, I was on my own and was more contest related and uh, not the big fuzz or the big announcements. Um, I prefer when doing something like this or on my own, I. I say, well, whatever I spend is gone. If I, I don't count on any donations and stuff. I mean, we got a few uh, sponsorships with radio, so, so I've got to be ready by myself. But um, we got quite a few donations, I mean, that covered the QSL costs that covered, I think, the generators. But it was, yeah, it was, I mean, you get donations, and I appreciate that. Individual give, individuals give you two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. Clubs, some clubs give you twenty dollars. Uh, I mean, big DX clubs, which is a bit of a disappointment then for them because they got all the big members. A big, big sponsor was the Northern California well, DX Foundation, yeah, yeah. but they have the money because they inherited. They probably got four hundred members too. No, they yeah, no, they someone someone they inherited they something, so they got some some real cash. How did you get all the antennas uh, out there? I mean, is this stuff that you cobbled together locally? Or uh, no, it was uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't touch on that, but it's uh, we actually shipped it to before from Darwin in a container, okay. and uh, well, it was a, again, it was a, a last minute thing, and uh, not so much that it left. Darwin too late, but uh, I think it was five minutes to, before customs shut down. On that day, they wanted to go over to the island that they gave the all clear yeah. and that you could take. It was, yeah, it was a bit odd. I mean, but anyway, I had my the linear, I had a Pelican case and I had a, a real good uh, a lock. The lockout lock from the mines, my good one, one of my good ones. I had it there, I had the key by my, with myself, I had a key with the, the freight forwarder, but what happened, they had to open it, oh. <laughs> they, they didn't find the key over there. And so, yeah, I, a little bit unorganized, but I mean, that's, that's part of it, as, as long as it comes together at the end, and even if it doesn't, I mean, that's part of it, yeah. that's, that's part of, of of being in a country like that, it's it's how the country works, and and, and you got to really eliminate as much as you can, but you can't look into the glass bowl. Burned. Did you leave the antennas there? No, no. No, shipped um, 
hang on, there is something was left on the island. So there is, Barry knows about ham radio now. So Ted, where is it? Ted, where's Ted, 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 Ted. Ted. Ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there is actually someone, one person there who understood what we were doing. Oh, it was the guy, Barry, who owns the resort. Right. And, um, and we left him, I think, a few things. And uh, yeah, he's, he's cool with anybody coming over and doing that. I mean, it's a bit hard to ask him uh, whether you could have his generator, his own generator, his backup. Uh, we had to have it, and he gave it to us once when, when one of ours failed. And uh, yeah, but other than that, if you, well, solar power, if you're running on 100 watts, if depending on what you do, or you can hire a generator on the island, but uh, yeah, well, you've got to make sure that all this, the fuel supply works. We had every second day, we had uh, I don't know how many cherry cans coming over, so uh, yeah, that was... So why did you bring fuel on the boat? For the, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah, we had to bring the fuel. Paint the hand. Exactly. It is, yeah, and uh, one thing I didn't mention was, uh, actually, it's not happening again. It uh, was something we found out when we switched on the radios the first time. There was this S9 noise. On that some that you think you're on an island far away, solar power, and it was one of the inverters, the solar inverters. And, and, and the, the deal was, or we promised Barry, or we fixed it in, in the first instance. What, was a hammer? <laughs> I don't know, I, I was not involved in that. <laughs> but we promised him uh, to, to ship a uh, better inverter over. But, but he, since we understood it, he actually switched it off for the time and it was only on and, and he was running I think himself on, on uh, power on uh, generator when it was and it was I, I don't know I can't re really recall the very details but it was that his, his inverter or that that noise only went on at seven at, from seven at night so for only a certain period so it, it can't be the the regular inverter so it wasn't really eco we were pseudo eco <laughs> <laughs> How's he got it set up, Trent? With the solar panel, does he have any wind or? No, just else? solar. Or just solar. Yeah. And do you so know what the system is like? What batteries he's got and the inverters? Oh, I haven't had a look at that. Okay. I would have now, but. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no. I, I thought about it too late. I was too focused on other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so about the generators. I mean, they've sometimes got inverters in them as well. With that caused much RF noise. No, no, that was not the case. Uh, we had a problem with one, not RF wise. It was, can't remember what it was, and he had to take it back, or we had to put it on, on the boat. And uh, we, that was for a few days, we had Barry's generator. And I can't remember what it was at the end. But we had two generators, 3.5 kilo, kilowatts. Is it kilowatts? Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, three, two of them, and yeah, three, four stations. Did you feed the output with two forty volts straight into something that dropped it down to twelve volts, or <laughs> no? No, well, we we fed it straight into the the power supplies, the two forty volt to twelve volt power supplies. Yeah, what, did yeah. you use switches or straight? We had two stations on one and two stations on the other one. To the amps, there were 240 volt amps. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that was no problem at all. And even the the ACOM, which is ACOM 1000, it's a, well 1000 watts out. But that was the, the biggest we had, and that really didn't cause any issues power wise. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, but I might have come a little bit late. Sorry, yeah. you might have already addressed it. Um, malaria, I believe there's a lot of malaria there. Well, they said yes, and I went to see a doctor here, and uh, he kind of, he sold me these tablets, one for, how much was it, three bucks or four bucks, one for each day. But uh, in hindsight, uh, because uh, we were on the island, and they had, uh, it wasn't a trade winds, but constant wind blowing, except for one night, actually, uh, we didn't have any, any mosquitoes. Or was yeah, a few flying around, but it was not. I, I didn't take my tablets until that night. <laughs> 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 then I thought, oh yeah, you better do that. 
when they're transmitting, there's no uh, mosquitoes in the near field. Yeah. <laughs> you can see the blue sparks. Yeah. <laughs> what, what about in Dili? Were there mosquitoes there? Yeah, there were, but uh, yeah. it was was quite all right. I mean, it's it's obviously not the worst time of the year for mosquitoes. Yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, the country is desperately trying to build up a tourism industry, but uh, the problem is in, in many countries, similar <coughs> countries, is while well, they only have a limited amount of funds available, and everybody is saying, I need it first, and well, infrastructure, you, you drive on the roads and it's it's really, it's potholes, it's, it's no expression, it's, 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 it's <laughs> devastating, it's, uh, and, and education. Well, tourism, what, what does tourism need? And, and, well, they, they all survive. I mean, they, no one's starving, although they had uh, real bad periods in, in the past decades where people were starving. But, uh, well, where do you start in terms of tourism? Obviously, I mean, ham radio-wise, there is a bit of potential, but, uh, well, let's, let's be realistic, not, not really a lot. Um, divers. That's potentially a place, but then I'm not a diver. I don't know what uh, Bali or what, whatever island next door to us is, is offering, diving-wise. But the uh, diving grounds seem to be quite good, what, what I've heard. And, uh, yeah, so tourist-wise, it's more the, yeah, the ones interested in, in the country, in a young country, and uh, just experience it. But uh, I... I can really recommend everybody to go there with a bit of uh, preparation, of course, and uh, and not doing uh, extreme things. But uh, yeah, even radio-wise, it's worthwhile, as I've said, and and I've read it. I've got it in, in writing actually, in one of their forms where they describe how to fill out their license application form. It says this thing about the the CEPT license. Yeah, and. Um, or friendly. I'm not sure about Dilly about the power lines. I mean, whenever I see power lines that are uh, fixed like in the way they are over there, <laughs> I can hear it already. But <laughs> <laughs> as we no, think about it, it was in September. Temperature was. It was. I never felt uncomfortable. I mean, it's not okay. like like uh, February, March yeah. here. No, no way okay. in. Oh, okay. was, was good, but that's... So would you say low 30s and not too humid? Low 20s. Oh, right. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And so on the island, I mean, we might have had Brief. a bit of a few humid days, but uh, yeah, it's... It just moves slower. Yeah. I mean, it's... Yeah, but, but nowhere near the worst times here in summer. Okay. And the equipment was reliable due to no problem transporting... Except for the Azo. <laughs> Which was obviously cool. my fault. It's been, I mean, you know, how long I've been having problems with that bloody amp. But uh, yeah, actually, it was, uh, Elecraft was good. Um, Did you build the K2? Or? No. No, I'm, I'm not into that, unfortunately. Oh, well. <laughs> no, I actually, the K2 was built by an American friend who brought it over few years ago and I actually the first trip it did was to Cocos Island, Cocos Key Island. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the K3, I, I actually ordered a KPA 500 myself and uh, and that's similar to the K3, it's only it's ports which you put in and you don't need to solder it at all. So uh, that was straightforward. It's, it's a nice little amp, it's exactly the same size as the K3 but only 600 watts now. That's enough. That's yeah. enough. <laughs> <laughs> so how long you had your, your K3? A year. Okay. Probably a year. Yeah, I bought it second hand actually. Okay. Have you ever used the microphone? No. No. <laughs> 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 what paddles do you use then? The paddles? Bench. I've got Bencher. Ten bench. I thought yeah, I saw you a the on your desk. No. Oh, that was from someone else. <laughs> okay. That wasn't yours, that magnetic glassing? <coughs> no, no, it was. Well, mine was the bencher, and it's, it's a bit, looks a bit torn and a bit uh, okay. worn down. It's done down. about 900,000 QSAs. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>
I heard you're looking for a new call sign, lad. So change from your call sign now to something like DK2QYQ. QYQ. Two two Q -Y -Q. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that Q code. No, no, what's no, that? No, that's just a joke. <laughs> no, no, what's QYQ? <laughs> oh, you time. mean a long it's one? A, it's oh, you mean the send, ho hotel, <laughs> hotel Sierra or something? You wouldn't like that. You wouldn't like that. Yeah. And they they have a very good ears. Came yeah. back on never the first call. Always. Well, you were. I mean, you, you and everybody in Australia fairly loud. That didn't work here. I mean, uh -huh. I definitely uh, worked times. here a few times. Uh -huh. Didn't hear anybody else, Ted, and uh, well, I was, I was actually, actually waiting for you for, for your swing. <laughs> <laughs> you can't miss Ted, can you? <laughs> 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 How did you guys send all the cards though? You sent cards? How, yeah, that yeah, that all goes via the, the English bloke. Uh, right. Yeah, now Zero. that's a good quick point. This, yeah. That English guy must be nuts. He's going to say... No, 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 he's making a mint. Yeah, $2.30. Two, well, two bucks is bucks that Bill, Bill Horner is providing the cards or somebody? No, no, no. <laughs> Nothing to do with him. Okay. Yeah. Because he said he's going to sponsor with, with uh, QSL cards or something. I Horner. think we got sponsorship from the... the what is it? Well, he's no longer Oceania, the ex-foundation. That's uh, we've got sponsorship from them. No, the QSL cards. I mean, they. I think they were. We had, and that was up to, to the QSL manager and his system. He's managing for 9M60XX and uh, XRO and for the guys in Darwin already. So he said, okay. Well, he, he certainly answers any QSL. He he was very keen and really anxious about getting the cards printed and getting them out ASAP because when he got back home he already had so many inquiries and we had the regular ones which came in by post and the other ones with, with that online request system yeah. and fair enough I mean uh, it's, it's costing return postage uh, but he's not he wasn't asking uh, excess I mean there's a round number to it but uh, yeah so that's was his interest and still is, and he's, he's doing a great job. And all the bureau cards will be answered as well. <coughs> One more question. Why are you using that particular login program? Um, the guys decided about oh, it, yeah. I, but, but I liked it. I was very surprised, positively surprised. I'm using it myself. Yeah, well, that's what they say. It's supposed to be the best. Idea. Yeah, but it's, I mean, some people, some, some of them didn't like to go with it, but uh, Oliver, one of the guys, he was in charge of the network mm -hmm. and he said, well, that's the best networking wise, but... Uh, yeah, except for the backup. Except for why. <laughs> and uh, they said, uh, everybody said except me, they wouldn't use it again in that particular environment. Mm -hmm. I still keep using it because I, I believe it's... Yeah, well, it suits my purpose. I mean, everybody's got preferences. Yeah. You're in the contest now. Yeah, what yeah, do they use in, uh, when you go to when you were in Russia or the the world contest? What what software? What so, yeah. It was the same, but the same. it was it was actually a, it's a French software and it was yeah. actually written. There was a special version written for that, that particular is. event. So it was they took modules away and just left it with a core so that you. People could not cheat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's a big, big topic. But <laughs> yeah. So, any more questions for Bird? Or are we letting him off the hook? No. Uh, keep asking questions. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bird, can I just say thank you very much for coming up tonight? Great right. to see you again. What a fantastic lecture! Warm up our radios and antennas down no, there, and then gathering around to watch it. <laughs> no, I, I tell you, this was no, except for November. This was the last time I used the radio. Last year was I was pretty quiet. So that's why you come to so the radio. There was, there was this this kind of desire, this push, and after I don't know how many cues I made, but the, uh, well, you it know, satisfied it. <laughs> you're moving to Broome, yeah. and so the onus is going to be on you to put up some antennas so we can chat, but. Uh, Something tells me you might even get a visitor or two while you're up there. Yeah, well, if, if anybody challenge. wants to come, let me know, but I'm, I'm a bit concerned about everybody coming in in June. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually inquired with Council over there, 
and they said the maximum antenna height is three meters above roof line. <laughs> <laughs> What's it going to fall? You need an apartment building, yeah? Yes, yeah, that's right. You need, you need to rebuild the whole building. building. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Fiberglass radar roof. Yeah. 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 Anyway, look, thanks. We'll let you off the hook. Thanks for, uh, for listening. For not falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs>